<laughs> like y'all haven't seen me before. <laughs> All right, we're gonna to talk today a little bit about what I like to call genre cooking. All right, everybody loves to come to conventions, everybody loves to dress up, everybody loves to have fame parties. Cooking is more than just putting little bats on cookies at Halloween. If you're going to go for the effect, go for it whole hog, genre cook. Every favorite book, every favorite movie, everything always has a meal in it, somewhere. Now, if it's a Soprano show, it's easy, it's pasta, got it. You know, too simple. Ragu, it's in there. You know, you got it simple. Your favorite vampire novels, there's always something opulent. There's always that glass of red wine. Did they ever tell you what it is? Seriously, they never, you know, because a lot of the writers don't know. Now, the writers that do know food really get off in food. We have a great deal of fun. And I write dark fantasy, so the story just gets creepier because they're paying so much attention to dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Who used to be All three parts cheese. of the dinner. You know, yeah. you know, Hannibal Lecter actually got us almost back to cooking. Yeah, oh, that's creepy. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of, mmm, that was kind of disturbing. But, um, yeah, yeah, you know. That was more the steak tart tart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It a, almost saw with, flame. You know, and with a nice Chianti. <sighs> You're like, oh, Anthony, wow, that's just creeping me out. Okay, since steampunk is so big, <laughs> we decided that we would actually go back in time a little, think about that 1860 or so, and do a couple of quick dishes that had something to do with the era and time. One of them is going to be a basic meat roll. Very quick, very simple, very kind of snazzy. You can either bake it or you can pan it. Either way, we're going to go for the pan, obviously, provided I don't blow myself up with something Dutch is set up over here. I was expecting something that needed a power cord. They gave me something flammable and a knife. So don't y'all feel much more comfortable in it now? So, because it's scaring the willies out of me. Oh, I feel good. Look, I have flame We're short disciples. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, flame. Oh, look. Flame. Know, it's, it's flame. Ah, Not sorry. always a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, That's a very proportional thing with the gas. Uh, the other thing I decided to do today was we're going to play with a little bit with asparagus. Huge things to play with. People truly miss playing with their veggies. And believe me, back in the 1860s, 1870s, all the way up until World War II, everybody had the garden. Everybody had, even if you lived in a flat, you had a window garden. Everybody had fresh herbs, everybody had fresh everything. So now today, well, basically you go to the store, and since you didn't have time to do a bread mill, you buy prepackaged bread. Since you don't have time to make your own spice mix, you buy prepackaged spice, but you can play with anything you want. So that's where it gets kind of fun. So we're actually going to try to fire this up here. Mm. Let's find out. Kimberly may be getting in, may be getting information for the insurance company. All right. Yeah. The one thing you'll notice I did first got my flame first because we don't want to hear those infamous words. <laughs> Food is bad. <laughs> yes, I, I love watching people turn on the gas and then start fiddling with something. That's when I start. <laughs> Somebody's losing some eyebrows. <laughs> Why not? Great. All right. Since we're in the modern world and things are very, very convenient, we're going to cheat a little bit. We're not going to squeeze our own oil, although we are going to have to fight our way into the container. All right, I just want to dash to start transferring heat. I don't want to lock it. And what we're going to do, we're going to start braising this a little bit because this is going to be part of our meat roll. Cards, questions, or comments about playing in the kitchen? Anybody had any disasters or great successes in playing with themed cooking? Time nobody, nobody has time. It's like, you bury it. You bury it quickly out back, and nobody notices. But well, I'm just learning to cook because the only yeah, thing I had to so cook I. was pork chops, and then I became the microwave queen. Ah, ooh. Well, I can cook anything in a microwave. I, that's, I'm not sure I say that too loudly. That's kind of frightening. Yes, you know, I'll address, 
send you some of my best recipes. So I hope which are quick and easy and very tasty. I need chicken soup flambe. Chicken soup flambe. <laughs> Chicken soup flambe. That was the word flambe. I actually heard it. Yeah, I was dying to hear this. The so really sound you've ever heard is the empty salt shaker. What you just said after the kitchen on fire. <laughs> okay, so you have a pond of flambe soup and flambe soup. The flambe soup. I, 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 somehow or another, I'm equating that to the river is on fire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm all the ingredients in soup and still trying to figure out how to well, it. On a chicken soup, though, you, you, you probably flamed the oil. Oh, it was rabbit. I messed up three whole rabbits in that pot of soup. It was a pot of soup. Three was whole flames. rabbits? Yeah, full flames on the back porch. And as we got inside, the boys had all bolted. They're like, no, They no. ran. I was holding and the dog. You were. This was a good thing. <laughs> Salt and Sarah picks it up and she goes, Oh crap. It's empty, the big container of salt. Empty, empty, empty. So we pull out the little two pint fire extinguisher from the 70s with the pen and the empty reader. Um, and it works. Save the kitchen. Saving the kitchen is a good thing. And, and so we did. <laughs> Pizza is also a good thing at this stage of the game. Yes, well, so, we've, we got we've been laying flooring all day, so I came back out to the living room where they were all hiding, I mean sitting, <laughs> and, and I said, okay guys, pizza will be here in 45 minutes. Whoa. One of my friends went, oh, so. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you always were an experimental cooker. Yes. Maybe she just had no cooking. idea how avant-garde <laughs> the Welsh rare bit was going to become. I always thought I was doing real good cooking. I got my soup. With the broth and then the vegetables and the meat and I had it all going really well. But nobody told me I wasn't supposed to put like the entire packet of noodles in the pot. Oh dear. <laughs> so I did because I love noodles. And when I came back the lid was about this far off the top of my crock pot and it went horrible. <laughs> and I ruined scary. my soup. Huh? I did, I ruined my soup. Kind of scary. Oh, I didn't know how to cook when I got my first college apartment. And my roommates decided to do me a favor, so they went down to the bookstore, and one of them purchased for me the Simple Fool's Handbook to Cooking. Ah. <laughs> and I said to this girl, well, I guess you know what, I know what you think of me. She went, no, you're a complex fool. However, you need help cooking, so. Yeah, and I still use the beef stroganoff recipe out there because it was wonderful. Mm, my favorite cookbook? Awesome. The five ingredient cookbook. There's no more than five ingredients to any meal in the entire thing. Because nothing turns me off the recipe than looking at a book and going, okay. Um, the instructions begin with make a root. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not even that, but it's got like 24, 27 ingredients to it. And you're like, I don't own half of these. Yeah, I don't have all those. I don't know where to find the other half. I can't pronounce two of them. <laughs> yep. It's like, I understand. Is that an herb or is that? <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Grocery store combination down on the corner of Brainerd. I don't understand. It's like there ought to be someone you can go and go. By the way, how do I find that? You're like, where, you're where, ruining your damn book. Where, where can I? Where find do it? I find French tarragon, fresh rosemary, and something called bees? Ah. <laughs> you're like, what? Huh? But yeah, where do you find ground yellow turmeric? You know, is this a McCormick spice, or do I have to find the Indian cooking store? And I love the ones that call for saffron, if that's just yeah. It's yeah. outrageous. It's oh, yeah. For 15 bucks for this. Like, yeah, and, 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 and of course... And you have threads. <laughs> yeah, there's tiny little things. All right, I'll show you a cute little trick here. Um, while I'm doing this, I'm threading the asparagus. But we're starting with the asparagus backwards. Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to thread this direction, it's going to break. This direction, that you can actually sense. probably wound somebody with it. Get them real good. Now, for, if you're going, if you're going to like do the cute little strips and like that, everybody always wonders, how do you do that? How do you do that? How do you do that without cutting your hand? Because I see everybody doing this. Don't you do this? This, is this means you're going to be in one of my books because Dracula's going to be licking the knife. All right, what you want to do is just lay it down and watch this. Just put your knife down in it and just literally lift up, and you automatically cut a beautiful little stitch right down through there. 
with absolutely no danger to yourself, loved ones, and or pets. So, <laughs> That's a good trick. it also keeps the knife carefully under your control. So, and then you just kind of wad him up. Yeah. <laughs> See, that would be on that story. I once tried to take my thumb off. You tried to take your thumb off? I only took three-fourths of the nail. Only, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that it took me a while to figure, get enough blood clear to figure that out, though. We, <laughs> <laughs> it was the middle of the night, so I was a little concerned. I looked you're, alone. You're, you're adding the crunchy bits, so it's like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what is that? It's a water chestnut. Though, right? Yeah, it's a water chestnut. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I thank God for my fingernails half the time, because if it wasn't for them, I'd, I'd be missing chunks. We got, I'll end up with these big grooves in my, my fingernails. I went right up under it with the knife. Oh. Ouch. Oh. I tried to peel my finger. Try yeah, to I tried peel to peel mine too. Oh, no. I tried to grate mine. Okay, now let me, let, painful. Let, let me give you a couple of secrets. Peelers, never buy anything other than the 89 cent cheapy vegetable peeler at the grocery store. All that other stuff that costs $10, $15 doesn't work. Get the yeah, I mean, you know, the dollar eighty nine, you know, the really chintzy looking one, but it's all just kind of, you know, like a bit piece of metal and like a little scraper on the end. That bad boy will work till your grandchildren throw it away. The twenty dollar one, oh, they're rusted in the store. They look like just absolute <laughs> mess. They're in the store. Of yeah, the others don't work. And, and another thing, don't be afraid to play around with genre stuff. Um, one debate I was having whether or not I was going to have time in an hour, um, I was going to introduce y'all to butternut squash. So instead of doing it, I'm going to tell you about it. It's a pumpkin. It's very popular for turn of the century food. It's making a comeback. Uh, what people don't understand is anything like that has a huge amount of variety. Um, has anybody ever seen a spaghetti squash? Yes. yes. Anybody <laughs> had them? <laughs> anybody cooked one? Uh, I've eaten okay. it, but I'm not cooking it myself. I cooked it. Just keep my hand up. Yeah. Here you go. Take that bad boy and give me a huge instant recipe. Huge steampunk turn of the century taste sensation. All you gotta do, slice that bad boy in half so that he sits like a bowl. Add a little water, add a little butter. <laughs> baking for about 45 minutes. Let him cool. <laughs> Take a fork and make spaghetti. It will turn into noodles. Yeah. You that you can it. now take out of the spaghetti squash and treat like any pasta. Yeah. You can even put marinara sauce on it and school the stew out of that friend that will not eat veggies. They'll yeah. be just thinking they're having the most wonderful al dente noodles they've ever had. Mm -hmm. yep. Take a flavor. You really want to blow somebody away, a tiny little bit of garlic. A little bit of parsley, whip that together, hot pan, just a couple of minutes. Done. It's fabulous. So, I grew up out west, and all the chicken touches squash are still very, very popular. There. So, you know, they just, they, I mean, what you can do with them is just amazing. People buy squash in this area because decorations are on the whole mm -hmm. Yes, I, they were selling in large they, they were selling acorn squash as decorations over at the bar. And, and you know, one of the favorite desserts. Would you like to know how to make acorn squash absolutely irresistible? I wouldn't do it with the 10 foot pole. Yes, please. Simple. Simple. <laughs> Cut it in half. Take out the seeds. Make a bowl out of it. I've eaten it that way. Put a, no, no. You're not, I hang on. It that way. Hang on. Put a pat of butter in it. And two teaspoons of honey and bake it. Okay, now what they would do out west, I can't believe what kind of squash it is now for the life of me. Would you cut it in half, put butter in it, and brown sugar? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. And you've got not acorn squash. Yep. It, it is absolutely all kinds of stunning. Squash, but it's a dessert. Yes. 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 And it's delicious. And yes. you know, that's absolutely. what they just. Absolutely. Like I said, out west, they do all kinds of fun things with squash. It's not decoration. We're going to let that begin cooling for a they moment. They said, why are you using that as decoration? <laughs> now, my mother used to substitute butternut squash for pumpkin in her pumpkin pie. Uh, oh. so it's not and a you could not tell the difference. It's not a substitute. A butternut squash is a pumpkin. Yeah, but you couldn't tell the difference in taste except the burger was not good. Yeah, well, Actually, you can. There is a slight difference in taste, but most people would not enough to make a difference. Yeah, you not enough have to, have to actually. Side by side the whole you would have to have them side by side, and you would have to have somebody with a very trained palate. To know most people are used to adding sugar to pumpkins, so they think it's two different things, and they might not put sugar in the butter. All right. Yeah. 
we're going to let these come out and cool for just a moment because those are going to go in our meat bowl. Now, you'll notice that I did not keep cooking them. I got them about half done and set them off the heat and left them covered. Anybody want to tell me why? Let the heat cooking themselves. Yeah, just let, just let it slow itself down, and that way you don't develop that lovely little uh, shoe leather effect. You know, y'all had that piece of meat that honestly you could ride around the backyard a couple of times more and maybe soften him up. Yeah, that way you avoid doing that. Those are fun to gnaw on. Yes, yes, they're also, you know, they also get the part of the dog So, you know, it's so. Now, here we go. We're going to have a little fun here. Yeah, everybody's leaning back again. Well, I think we've decided it's not going to blow up in my face. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that vote of confidence. <laughs> we know Dutch. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about the Dutch 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 Yeah. All right. So, do it here. Swap around. Those will be unsauteed. Those will be unsauteed. And we're going to do chocolate. And Johannesburg. Sorry, but a giant chocolate bunny wrap just got my attention. Uh, you know. It's hard to compete with chocolate. Oh my god. Especially in a room full of women. You know, let's, let's face it, Coco Mole is absolutely divine. <laughs> Hard Did y'all know that chocolate was never designed to be sweet? Yeah. Ooh, somebody's been, somebody read uh, like Water for Chocolate. We, <laughs> no, History no. Channel. History Channel, okay, that'll do. <laughs> yes, chocolate was reserved for Human Sacrifice Day. Yeah. You could eat this one for a lot of these yeah. stuff too, I like that show. Oh, uh, Alton? Love Alton. Alton, bless his, bless his geeky little heart. My gosh, he just He's got just, more fun. He can't understand, so I want to match with the nerd in me. He just, well, you know, just, that's all. He's adorable. And he talks normal. Well, sort of. He, well, he doesn't have that hoity toity sound. Yeah, he's, he that. definitely speaks food geek. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely has a good time with that. And he's willing to get down to basics. Like, no, really. This is why you shouldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah, this is why you should. This is what you should. If you want this effect, you need to do that. Do y'all know how to simple. make the world's most tender steak? Yeah, she's that no. <laughs> That's how everybody else does it. Would you like to know how your restaurant does it? How? They take a lovely little plastic pan, they punch holes around the side, they put the steak in it, they come back in about four days. Yep. Slow cook. And everybody goes, no, no, no slow cook. That's this is aged. sitting in the fridge. Oh, aged. That's sitting in the fridge. That is what is called an aged steak. Yeah. Because what happens is fresh Nothing steak. Nothing lasts in my fridge for four days. <laughs> it just doesn't. Uh, Maybe some salon. I'm not sure if you're going to say marinade, but do they marinate it too? Or do yep. they just That's aging. That's aging. aging. Uh, no steak restaurant ever would marinate me. Wow. They use rubs. They, they, they will do that at the point of cooking. They will not do that at... It has they don't want anything between you and me. And the other cool thing is the fresher the ingredients that you're using, the less spice that you need. Yes. Another yeah. cute little cute little trick. Especially when you're dealing with uh, seafoods or anything like that. Uh, you want that nice fresh in that. Yep, yep. Oh yeah. I don't buy seafood at the time. I'll go to the store that day and buy seafood. And what's cool is Fresh Market won't sell seafood on Sunday and Monday. They won't. Fresh Market will not sell seafood Sunday or Monday because they can't get it that day. It's not shipped. And they won't sell it at least. I thought that was weird, but then I figured out why. Yes, because it's, it's, and it's not good. Yeah, it's, it's not delicious. that day. You know, so. I, I got spoiled. I grew up on the coast, Oregon coast, and the, mm. the seafood we got 
was caught that morning. Yeah. Yeah. There's something about being able to go out to the shrimp boat and they're still flipping. Yeah. You know, like seafood. And it's kind of hard to do in Chattanooga. Yeah. And so I don't like seafood. Yeah. Okay. That's my husband. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we'll bring it up just a tiny bit. Now, cool thing you can do other variations from this time period. Crescent rolls. Crescent rolls? You want to make a devastating dessert? Take you a simple, I mean, out of the can crescent rolls. Roll them out flat, add blueberries, blackberries, peach, your favorite fruit. Roll it up, bake it. You're done. That's it. Pull dessert. Oh, you want to go crazy with it? Sprinkle yeah. a little rock salt. Well, now rock salt, rock sugar. Mm. Actually, there is a there is a where just a tiny, tiny bit of salt will bring out the flavor of the fruit. Mm -hmm. Just a tiny, tiny bit. I mean, it is like you wave it by for good luck. <laughs> you don't want to like rock salt on it like it's a rock like you know, like it's like it's a piece of meat, but just a tiny, tiny bit of salt will bring out the flavor. If you really want to go bizarre with it, taking this a step further, you can actually. Uh, put them all in a pan, all nice and snug up against each other, and then you can cheat with a can of Mountain Dew. Add just about a quarter of an inch of Mountain Dew to the bottom of the pan, slap that baby in the oven. Ten minutes later, you will have a dessert that will be citrusy, fruity, and a light pastry cookie. Literally takes that long to do. It's that fast. So, quite, quite interesting. Now, you're catching on, somebody said something earlier about five ingredients or less. Are you guys catching on that we're not using a thousand different ingredients? Yeah. We're just using a simple, every kitchen has got some kind of spice mix or rub or something like that in it. Uh, I'll put a few more of these. Whoever has a try for me. Me, staff. <laughs> in your hand. Thank you. <laughs> now, the cool thing is, if you look in here, it's starting to swell. It's actually starting to swell up. While that's doing its thing, we'll let it go just a couple more minutes. A few more seconds. And not boom that one. <laughs>
Your school park. Is that why? That was I will let y'all throw this out here. Some of them, no, and then we'll decide if I Just pull you a little bit out of there and see what well, you find. Very well. And now you can just kind of monkey bread it if you so desire. Not trying yet. I didn't want to get in the way in the lunchbox. Yeah. Cut it. Okay. Well, it's a cut for me. Really? In that case, just kind of peel you a couple pieces of meat out of there. It just adds to the ambiance. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, my boobs are easy there. Let's get a pay-up. There we go. Fresh cake. It's like you're actually here. Oh, yeah. Oh, Good. Really good. And I hate asparagus. So is the whole 
And it was my first time with asparagus. I right? take this all this left of my asparagus. <laughs> I'm doing one last batch. I keep loving this. I'm doing one last batch. They start drinking. And then I'm going to show you my quickie favorite asparagus dish in the whole planet, which involves after you get done cooking meats like that, you can braise asparagus like that. And just turn it down. Love it. I don't like to use real high heat when I'm playing with meat because that will have a tendency on certain cuts to turn it into shoe leather. However, nice thin small pieces. You can have shoe leather and nobody notices. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's, it turns out pretty nice. So, what y'all think? Yeah. yeah. Is that easy? Tell I'm kind of fond of food. Never, ever, ever, ever. Never. 
Not right. <laughs> I was going to say, let's set it on the table for two minutes. Yes, and you don't you have to wait for the fire alarm to go off. That particular device really doesn't have much to do with cooking. Okay. So, I'm going to report the stars. You realize, Alan, I'm going to put a load of whiskey on you. Uh oh, which one?